and thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to find out how to turn this bike here into this bike here, all ready to go cycle touring. But first of all, let's find out a little bit about the bike itself. So the bike itself is a specialised Tomac Elite, which means it is carbon from top to toe, apart from the wheels. If you look online, carbon might not be the best thing to do a long bike tour on. However, we're going to be packing so light it is absolutely doable. I've got the bike second hand myself, it's probably seven or eight years old, but it's got everything you need on there to absolutely go the distance. Two tips, if you are doing your first ever really long distance bike ride multi-day event, I would say first of all get a bike fit at least sort of three months prior to that it's going to set you back maybe 150 quid they might only put the in the, the saddle up half an inch or so but it's going to be absolutely worth it you might be used to doing a hundred mile ride at the weekend but once you've done six or seven eight ten of those back to back you're going to see the difference the second thing is a week out prior to your long distance bike ride get a bike service and a really good one at that they generally come in bronze silver gold go for gold you don't want anything going wrong or as best you can on this bike ride. So set yourself up for success, get a bike fit, get a bike service. In terms of the bike itself, the only thing I would definitely say get is a set of Continental Gator skins. I've done 3000 plus miles with these without any punctures whatsoever. And you cannot buy that peace of mind on a long distance bike ride. When you're out in the middle of nowhere, that's the last thing you want to happen. So these are about 50 quid for a set or something like that. And they're made with about five layers of, of Kevlar and special materials. So if you want peace of mind, get yourself some Continental Gator Skins. So there's about six or seven components in total. We'll go through each one, one by one, find out what's in the pocket and what's not in the pocket and why, and see if we can get you on your bike tour as light as possible. Let's start at the handlebar end. Two or three things going on here. First of all, I would never do a bike ride without some sort of Garmin and my route on there as well. So when you're looking down at the handlebars, you can literally see your route in front of your eyes. That's another video in Thai, so just Google Garmin uh, bike ride uh, mapping and you'll find loads of videos there. But I use the Garmin Oregon 450, quite old now, but it did the trick for me. First bag, of course. Now we move on to the things that you want at your fingertips. So I've got in this one here on the top tube, I've got my phone first of all, and secondly, I have got my little GoPro. This is a Hero Session Hero Session 5. It's the smallest and about the cheapest they come, but it did me, and if you, if you wanna watch my other Jogal video, you can watch it. It was all filmed on this little thing here. And finally, in this top bag, I've actually got a couple of socks. The reason being, one is to protect your phone and GoPro from the top tube, because this bag is quite thin, so lay one on the bottom to protect your goodies. And then, of course, another one, just in case, really, if I wanted to put my GoPro, if I wasn't planning on using it for an hour or so, I might wrap the GoPro in a sock. So there's two socks in this bag as well. I've got a couple of, well, my credit card and my uh, sort of details in this little pocket on the side here, just in there, and then here, this is the pump. Now, great place to put the pump, to save having it in your back pocket or somewhere around the bike. I literally just strapped it to my top tube with some electrical tape. So just to wrap that up, we've got our GPS system with our map on, we've got our phone and our GoPro, bank details, a pump, and of course, don't forget a couple of lights on the front as well. I always carry two lights on the front and the back, we'll see later. One stationary, one flashing, bit of extra safety. Okay, let's move on to the back and underneath the saddle. This is clearly your biggest bit of luggage and you'll be amazed actually what you can get in here and probably how little you need as well. But we'll look at that on the floor in a second. First of all, on the outside, I've got a pair of daps here. So this is what I'm wearing in the evening at the B&B, wherever I'm staying as cheap as possible. And that's just tied on there with some uh, elasticated band. On the back, I've got a little bit of high vis and one light as well, just another flashing light, anything to give you a bit more safety. But uh, let's have a look inside the bag. Okay, so we've moved the bike to one side and got our parcel off the back here. Again, a little bit of high vis going on on the back as well. So this is a Altura Vortex. I think it's a medium, but I can't quite remember. But again, look how small that is. Let's see what we got inside. So we've got a long sleeve base layer. We'll go through these in a bit more detail in a second, but long sleeve base layer for back at the B&B. 
We're looking here in a second, it's a waterproof bag. One pair of boxers, a very lightweight pair of uh, bottom leggings. I don't like wearing leggings on a bike, uh, sort of waterproof trousers, but they might be essential up in the highlands and things. We've got a second pair here of bib shorts and jersey, okay? So you could all imagine you're wearing one pair of your bib shorts and jersey, a second pair as well, so you can just rotate them day by day and hopefully get them washed afterwards each day. For the hotel or the B&B, you've got your uh, then sort of joggers or a very thin pair of bottoms to wear with your long sleeve layer as well. You've got a t-shirt. Again, you could probably do without this, but I always wanted a short sleeve and a long sleeve t-shirt for in the hotel. You've got another pair of boxers. This isn't a hygiene contest. If you want to take one pair of boxers, that's fine. I probably would. Um, you're, going to get the you're going to get to the hotel or the B&B or wherever you're staying, have a shower, then get changed into this kit, okay? It's not a competition. If you stink, you stink. Um, end off. So, but two boxes, I think, is probably quite nice. A spare base layer to go with your um, spare jersey and bottoms. So that's a bit of your cycling kit as well. So that's a whole spare cycling kit in here. You've also got a spare pair of cycling socks. You can rotate those day by day. Then down at the bottom, I can even fit in things like medicine. So you've got your arse chamois. Absolutely critical. Absolutely lather yourself in arse chamois every single morning, even to the point where you're putting it into your bib shorts. And um, so you put it on and it feels like you're getting into wet shorts. That's how much you need to put on. So one of those probably will last you um, a whole, well, lasted me eight days. And that is what, um, 118 mil in there, which doesn't sound a lot, but that lasted me a week. Also got different bits of medicine. So um, I've got here some ibuprofen gel, some ibuprofen, a couple of blister plasters, and that all went in there. So loads and loads in there, scrunches up into a tiny bag, but let's have a look in a little bit more detail. I'll put it all out on the floor for you so you can see again what you need and put a little list up as well. But that is a spare pair of cycling clothes, a spare pair of clothes for in the hotel or B&B afterwards, plus some bits and pieces. And don't forget this bag here, this is a little waterproof bag inside the bag. And in here, is the bits that I really, really don't want to get wet. I mean, that is so waterproof anyway, but just in case, I've got my phone charger, my GoPro charger, and also a spare few batteries for the GPS as well. So absolutely tons in there, and you don't need any more than that in there as well. Okay, so our main bag is back attached now. And just one thing, these daps I've got on here, what you can do, of course, these are gonna get wet at some point. So I did have these in a waterproof bag the entire time as well. Again, still strapped in the same way. So let's move on now to the inner frame here. We're gonna start with this bag, the larger one. Now this is where you can rotate gear. So we haven't talked yet about what you're gonna be wearing. So if I'm wearing a gilet or a rain jacket or something in between, this is where I'll keep all my alternatives. So let's say at the moment, I'm wearing a pair of short mitted gloves and I'm wearing just a gilet. It starts to rain, therefore I go to my alternate kit bag and in here I've got, first of all, uh, a spare buff in case I need one. Also in here is my rain jacket. Now one thing, get a quality rain jacket. This isn't the best in the world, but it is a Planet X. Uh, it's a Planet X, what was it? A uh, Hydrosphere Core Climate Control. There is not a jersey in the world that can keep you dry and cool. It doesn't exist, so ignore that. But it did keep me dry, kept me very dry indeed. Kept it in there. Again, if I put that on, I take off my gilet, stick it back in, just rotate things around. Same with the gloves. I could even keep in this pocket a uh, set of longer fingered gloves. Again, I like using the uh, fingerless ones, but again, keep them in there, rotate as and how you need. Right, we're now on to our second frame bag. And just a quick one, like this one and, and, and this here, these are costing a few quid each. I think that one was about six quid, that one was about four quid here from China, eBay, get it all cheap, don't spend anything more than you have to. Now this bag is what I call my stuff bag, because with the best of intentions, if you're packing these properly and tightly, you're not going to fit anything else in, but you will just find times when you just want to shove something somewhere. So this is the shove bag. And like this one, this is the kit that you want to access during the ride. Anything in here 
that's what you're not going to see that again till night time. You're not getting that out. So in my stuff bag, hang on, the zips on the other side. I've got, uh, I've got a spare little hat if I need it. I've got a spare gel. I've got um, a spare thing to go around my head. I've got a spare light. Just bits and pieces that you don't want to shove anywhere else because you will need it. And let's be realistic. You're going to get a couple of little things along the way. You're going to have your back full of food. That, we haven't got onto that yet, but you're, what you're wearing on your back, there's no rucksack, of course, but your jersey in your back pockets, that's where all of your food is going for the day. However, let's say you're halfway through a, a big day and there's only one shop and you want to absolutely load yourself full because you're near a bonk or something. You're going to buy some extra fruit pastels. That's what goes in your shove bag. Little bits and pieces that you can't fit in the other bags. Stick them all in there. And now we come on to our bottle cages. You'll have noticed there's two bottle cages. One of them is fluid, liquid. Now, when I was riding my Jaguar, it was actually a 750ml bottle. You want to be carrying as much as you can. So put a 750ml bottle in there. This second one is not fluid. This is, in fact, all of my repair kit. So in here, and you can buy these, they're about two or three quid off something like Wiggle or Chain Reaction Cycles. So in here is bits and pieces that Hopefully I'm never going to have to use, but just in case. So that's an extra strapping, just in case anything is coming loose. I've got in here, uh, I've substituted ibuprofen gel. That's actually uh, suntan lotion, a little bit of suntan lotion, one of those little pots you can get. Very, very important. There's a little bit more lube there, just so a bit of lube for on the go in sort of around different parts of your body. I've got a um, chain repair tool. Even if you don't know how to use one of these, Take one, because look at the size of it, plus somebody else along the way might know. You are going to see other cyclists. I've got my leeches or um, puncture repair patches. I've got in here a spare torch as well, just in case the spare light is always handy to have. I've got my multi-tool. Again, hopefully you won't have to use it, but buy a decent multi-tool. They don't cost much at all. I've got a little bit of chain lube. Again, you might want to put this on every couple of days. You're going to be doing a lot of miles, and there's going to be a lot of grease, a lot of dirt eventually. It, it builds up. And finally, I have got a spare inner tube. Hopefully, again, you might only need one. You might need two, but that's what you've got the patches for. So use the patches first. If you need a spare tube, when you get back to the hotel, take the original inner tube out and then fix it. But initially, I'll just stick a straight new tube in. And again, any of these bits and pieces, whether it's in any of these pockets, you might think, oh, I might take two inner tubes. No, you're gonna be passing shops and things, so don't do overkill. I've even seen somebody on a previous ride, and in their repair kit, they had a damn spanner. I'm thinking, what are you thinking? Take the minimum, there's bike shops in the UK, or even in Europe, wherever you're going, take the minimum. You can always run and make repairs by bits on the fly. So in terms of packing the bike itself, that is it completely done. You don't need to take any more than that. And what this is referenced to really is uh, I did mine on a John O'Groke's Land's End. So this is a thousand miles over eight days. I did exactly this bike, exactly this setup. And as you can see, it's still, it's incredibly light. You don't need any more than that. So finally, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got a lot of knowledge out. If any questions, any comments, let me know. If you want to see the video of my Jogor on this bike, just find it on my channel. It's out there. I'll be doing another video soon, which is a lot more Jogor or Le Jog specific, which is about nutrition, training, how to prepare, how to organise it, how you do your travel, your hotels, all that kind of stuff. That's coming soon, so look out for that. And uh, again, any questions, let me know. I'll get in touch. Back with every single one. See you soon. <laughs> And one last thing before we go, don't forget to go out on a bike ride when you've got your kit set up because something is going to chafe, something's going to rattle, you want to get that sorted before you go out on the long one. Alright, so go out for a bike ride, try it out. <laughs>